Hey guys, it's Ivan, and in today's video we'd like to explore the sound of low-pass gates typically found in a variety of West Coast synthesis patches. Low-pass gates is an essential part of dynamics, harmonics shaping in West Coast synthesis, creating a more natural, placky character. If you're coming from a more traditional subtractive synthesis background, you're already aware of filters which shape the harmonical content and VCAs, which control the amplitude of the sound. Low-pass gates combine both of these processing techniques into one, where the control of the amplitude and filter frequency is linked. This means that as you increase the amplitude, you will also be opening the filter and introducing more harmonics, and the same applies to reducing the amplitude. As you are lowering the volume, the filter also closes, creating a more natural fade into the silence. This filter, VCA coupling, mimics the way that many natural sounds work, and that is why people have been fascinated by the sound since the early 60s. And in terms of our system, you can find the low-pass gates, inside of the ground terminal, and actually we have two different types. One is the Vactral low-pass gate, another one is the Resonance low-pass gate, available on the mode 3 and 4, and the same thing applies to our Squawk Dirty filter. So, for today's patch, we will concentrate on creating a space with non-linear movement and generally unsynchronized feel, while still maintaining a sense of musicality. To create variable speed motion, we will be using the ground control for sequencing and two cross-modulated envelopes on the ground terminal. By interlinking two envelopes, we're giving the patch more life and unpredictability. First of all, let's set up our sound source. And for this patch, we'll be using the Furster generator final output and feed it to mode number three, which is the virtual low pass gate over here. And as we open the filter cutoff, the amplitude also increases. Next, let's connect the pitch CV output to the oscillator to create a melody, like this. And second, usually in subtractive synthesis, you would be using the envelope to modulate and open the filter cutoff. But for this case, since we are using the low-pass gates, we can just trigger them directly with the gate output from the ground control, like this. Now let's create our pattern with the ground control. By exploring the sequence direction, randomness, external modulation, we can achieve a pattern that has a life of its own. And the onboard quantizer will let us limit which notes to play. So even if the rhythm is unpredictable, the melodic content is still controlled. Applying extra random ratchets amount per step will give us extra movement and speed variation. Playing around with the sequence direction will let us extend our pattern in sometimes unpredictable manner. So let's hit play and start entering some notes for track 1. Now let's enter the editor mode by hold pressing the record button. Now we can scan through steps and add some ratchets. Now, let's randomize the ratchet amount by pressing the tempo button and ratchets. Select random. You can select forward, random, and the specific ratchet amount over here. So now, every time there is a step with a ratchet, the ratchet amount will be randomized. Now let's change the pattern direction from forward to random. Now let's add some harmonic variation to our FM tones, and to do that we'll modulate the pitch of the modulator oscillator. To do that, we'll be using the mod output, and if you haven't seen how to set up the mod output to output different voltages, check out the video over here. So let's plug that in, and hear the difference. Wait. 
With the low pass gates, you can use the resonance amount to control the decay of the envelope. I prefer to keep it at the minimum to have a more of a lucky character. Let's add some delay. Now that we have our pattern ready, let's try to make some modulations. And for this, we'll be using two cycling envelopes from the ground terminal and cross modulate each other so that we can have a bit of an unpredictable modulation source. So to do that, we switch both of them to the LFO or cycle mode. And now we'll be using the bipolar output from envelope number one to modulate the speed of the envelope number two. And then we'll be using the unipolar output over here to modulate the speed of the first envelope. Next, let's use the unipolar output from the first envelope to modulate the symmetry control on the Fourster generator. And let's use the bipolar output on envelope number two to modulate the mood index or the amount of a fam applied from the modulator to carrier oscillator. Now let's start the sequence and hear how our sound will change. Now let's use the end of stage output from the first envelope that is also cycling at different speeds to clock our delay. So to do that, first we have to press the tab button to set the secondary parameter to be our clock source and plug it like this. As you can hear, everything is already sounding much more interesting. Next, let's use some random from the Queen of Pentacles to modulate the internal parameters on the ground control. Let's first switch to track number two. Start the sequence. We have 16 steps on this one. Press record and add some gates. We can also change the direction of this track to be a bit more unpredictable. And then use this gate output to clock input on the random generator on the Queen of Pentacles. Now let's set the external modulation for track 1. To do that, we switch to track number 1, press tempo, external CV. And in this case, I want to modulate the octaves. You can also modulate the shuffle amount, the probability, and all the other parameters like semitones. But for this case, it's just going to be octaves. And then we'll take out this 0 to 5 sample and hold random generator, plug it to external CV input for track 1. And in theory, it should now modulate the octaves of our carrier oscillator. So let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Now let's use the pitch CV from track 1 or from track 2 to modulate the attack of the second envelope. Now let's explore this patch by modulating and changing the parameters of the envelopes and the different tonal controls on the Forster generator. 
The first envelope speed will control the speed of the delay, so if I reduce the attack and release, we'll hear some kind of strong textures. Also play around with the scale for track 1, to do that, let's press tempo, scale. As you see we have Lydian now, but we can start removing some of the notes. Making this type of patches, it's sometimes hard to know how exactly it can be used later on in your music productions, so it's always a good idea to record your explorations and save them for later use. You can always edit, cut, arrange them later, and you will always surprise yourself with how interesting your work sounds when you're not consciously thinking about the recording production aspect. That is why it's a good idea to separate the sound design and the production to get the best of both 